This is David Holloway, founder of Hunting Greatness, and I want to welcome you to a very special interview I'm doing with Cameron Wimbley. He's going to be sharing some real secrets, wisdom, and a little bit on his journey. But first, I want to thank you for taking the time out to listen to this, and I hope you find it valuable. everybody today we're with my man Cameron Wimbley and it's been a long time since we reconnected maybe like four years but that happens when you know people move around so much we trained together for an entire year in Cleveland um, he couldn't keep up with me most of the time I had to drag him along but no I'm just kidding Cameron he, he's a beast he's been uh, I mean I was looking up his his high school stuff I mean super prep parade rivals a hundred Rep star. I mean, you go down the list, he's on every one of them. He probably doesn't deserve that many, but he's on them anyway. I want to get right into it. Kim, um, as, a, as a kid, did you have a... I, I talk a lot about having a vision as a kid. It's, you know, I think it's more important than goals to have a clear vision of what you actually want. Was it always about playing football or being a pro athlete? Um, just talk about that for a little bit. What, did you have a vision and, and uh, you know, what was it? Well, I think for me, my desire to play football started around the third grade and I watched football uh, in Wichita, Kansas, uh, NFL football. I would say the Dallas Cowboys was my favorite team back mm. when they had Michael Irvin, Troy Aikman, yeah. and Emmitt Smith. And I started playing football as a quarterback uh, with the Wichita Golden Bulldogs. So, like, I loved the position. I loved all the attention that the position got. And I felt like I would be able to go to the NFL mm -hmm you know, first college at Florida State and into the NFL as a quarterback. It didn't exactly happen that way, but I would say my desire and my passion for the game of football started when I was in the third grade and mm -hmm. I was focused uh, from that point all the way up until now uh, being a professional football player. Right, so third grade, so you got yours pretty early on. Some people don't get their vision later, but that's that's cool. Why Florida State after, after high school? Well, in our household, we have this big rivalry thing where my brother, uh, he would like, you know, the other Florida team. So he would like the Gators and, mm -hmm. you know, I would be the Florida State guy. And this is back when they had like Charlie Ward and yeah. Snoop uh, Menace, Marvin uh, Menace. Uh, so it was pretty exciting whenever we, we got together and watched games together. And then in the NFL, you know, he was a, a Buffalo Bills guy, was the Dallas Cowboys. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously they had some great matchups. But I always knew uh, when I was a little kid that it would come down to either Michigan or Florida State if I had the opportunity to, to choose my college. Mm -hmm. And uh, after meeting Coach Bowden and going down to a Florida State camp, I pretty much knew uh, from that point on uh, that I wanted to be a Seminole mm -hmm. and then I got the opportunity uh, after being recruited uh, You know by Mickey Andrews and, and coach Bowden mm -hmm. down there at Florida State to go play and I committed and never looked back so I, I really enjoyed my my years down there um, my four collegiate years being a Seminole and playing with the, the guys down there and cultivating a lot of really good relationships yeah and uh, you know just a quick note, we had, uh, he always hung his Florida State hat in his locker. I don't know if we still do that, but <laughs> me and DeQuell, we, you know, we had, what, it was three Maryland boys. It was me, DeQuell, and EB, and we had him. So we had the upper hand whenever we talked about ACC and Florida State. And I think we beat you. We played against each other. So I think we, whoever was at home usually won that year. Yeah, you got And us. we should have beat you guys once, and I think it was 05, and, you know, and the, I can't really say much now because they just won the championship and looks like the, the number one again probably. And, you know, looking at that coach now, I could tell they got a great team and a great coach. So, you know, go FSU, I guess. Now. <laughs> <laughs> the rest is just about working out because, you know, that's all the behind the scenes work. That's where you actually become We need to become. I mean, Cameron, he's... I mean, I joke about me carrying him, but he, he uh, I mean, he just wanted everything. I mean, he, he's the fastest, this, you know, almost, I, I did beat him in a couple strength things, 
but um just kind of a freak one of those guys um they just kind of hate because everything just he's got it but um we're gonna talk about first question uh is talk about the warrior mindset that you kind of get into before games or really big workouts where you know you got to bring it well i think uh with some guys either you have it or you don't and that's for the guys who who get the picture uh, by being coached and being pushed by other players uh, as far as what type of mentality you need when you're going into comp you know, competition and whether it be lifting weights or getting out there on the field and stopping your opponent or you know, making your opponent submit. Um, I would probably say that you know, okay, I'm about to go into battle and if I'm not prepared, then I'll probably get embarrassed, dominated, you know, I'll take a L and that's not something that, you know, with the competitive nature, something that you're willing to, to be okay with, you know, so uh, when I train, I try to think of it like, okay, here's what I need to do in order to give myself the best chance to be successful whenever I step out on the field uh, and, and play and compete. Uh, if not, you already know, like your your opponent's not gonna have any mercy. So right. you really don't have any choice, you know. Mm -hmm. If you wanna stay around for a long time, you have to go into it knowing like, hey, this is gonna be a serious battle. You know, football's a, a tough sport. Right. So you gotta be mentally strong as well as physically strong. And I think that's where the warrior mindset really uh, plays a big deal because if you're not into it mentally and if you get defeated mentally, then everything else will follow. Right, that's a good answer. What uh, What's your favorite place to train of all time and why? Of all time, of all time. Well, currently I, I train here at Impact in, here in Tampa. I think they do a great job. Uh, I, I put my trust and my faith in the staff here and uh, I've been working with uh, Denny Lacasio here. I, I've also worked with Scott mm -hmm. uh, back when he was at Sports and Field. But I think we do a, a excellent job of training here, and I, I really enjoy it here. I'd probably say uh, next to this experience would be when I was training in college. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you've had experience uh, training in college and in the pro, but I think you make your biggest jumps right. in terms of a player when you're in college from mm -hmm. that high school level to the college yeah, level. Definitely. Yeah, with the speed, the strength. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would probably say everybody puts on at least 15 pounds of muscle mm -hmm. uh, coming in. So it's really a, a big transition. There's a lot of hard work involved. And I will probably say that college level workout experience has been, you know, probably the biggest, uh, biggest workout transition from like one level to the next level. Right. Totally agree. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite workout partners and why? Um, I've had some great workout partners. I think we even worked out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we had a good summer. Yeah, man, yeah. We we got a, a strong guy on our team now. His name is Mike Martin. This guy's like a, a freak, and he yeah. actually went to Michigan. Uh, but, you know, he pushes me now with the Titans, so mm -hmm. me and him would get into it, obviously. I mean, he can lift more than I can. He's like 305 pounds and just solid muscle. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like our explosive lifts, like cleans and stuff like that, I can keep up with them. But when yeah. we get to, to bench, he'll pretty much, he'll blow me away. <laughs> but, but I like lifting with that guy. I think yeah. he challenges me a lot. And you know, we're both competitive. You know, we talk a little bit while we're lifting. Right. But I would say Mike Martin right now. Yeah. And it's, you know, one of the most, one of my secrets is you gotta get, you know, whatever, in Cleveland, Cam was the best workout partner I could have, so. It, it just makes sense because, you know, just competitiveness comes out and people just push each other. Is there any workout that you did that really stands out, like, you know, above all the other? Oh, uh, well, we had some great workouts uh, at Florida State with uh, John Jost, uh -huh. who was our strength and conditioning coach back then. But we also had a guy in Cleveland named John Lott. And when I first got there as a rookie, he yeah. took us through this these rookie workouts and I mean it was 
I know exactly what you mean because yeah. my rookie in Arizona, we had John Lund. He oh yeah, the year he came over. I love John, man. He's a a great motivator. Ooh, yeah. yeah, man. We uh, actually did our our bench press at mm -hmm. the combine under John, so yeah. he's gonna bring a lot of energy. Oh yeah. I mean, we were doing everything from running up hills at Cleveland yeah. to running in the sand pit to. I mean, you name it, we did it. Olympic yeah. lifts, we got everything in and we did it all, you know, yeah. to the max. Yeah. One of my favorites too, and you gotta love all this saying, golf ball and high weeds yeah. and booyah and all the other stuff. He's a character, but um, hey, he's one of the favorites of many, many people. Yeah. Who would you say taught you the most about training, uh, if there is somebody? Mm, I'll probably say I learned a lot under John Lott, mm -hmm. you know, when you're coming out of high school, your technique and everything isn't yeah. perfect. And uh, John Lott, I believe he trained under Boyd Epley at Nebraska, mm -hmm. and, and he's done some phenomenal work there with uh, getting players and, uh, you know, taking players who may not be elite, right. but helping them reach their max potential, right. uh, whether it be in the weight room or on the field with their performance. So I would say John Lott helped me get to that next level, and I appreciate all the work that uh, that we did together and all the technique that he's taught me, and it still applies till yeah. today. Someone from the past you would love to, to work out with? Someone from the past that I, I would probably say a guy named Andre Wadsworth, mm -hmm. uh, who went to Florida State. He was a defensive lineman there before I got there, mm -hmm. but uh, I've heard phenomenal stories about him, you know, coming in, uh, playing D-line. He was an underweight guy, kind of like I was, but he was a workout freak. And, I mean, he got up to, I believe it was like 280-something pounds of solid muscle, you know, where I don't know, I don't think he was over 250 when he got in there. But uh, just hearing the stories about him and obviously the work that he put in at FSU and then getting drafted, so high, I believe he went to the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. uh, he would be somebody that, you know, back when he was at Florida State, that would have been great to work out with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I asked that question because it's, you know, everybody kind of has someone they look up to. Mm -hmm. um, when I came in, it was E.J. Henderson just because, uh, on the field, because he was, you know, parade everything and two-time everything and Maryland everything. But mm -hmm. behind the scenes in the weight room, it was a guy named Leon Joe who was, the strong, I mean, he benched almost 500 pounds. He was only like 225. That's ridiculous. And he ran a 4-3, I mean, just the animal. How has the training mindset and the physical results you've seen impacted your life, just not talking about sports, uh, just your life in general? Well, <clears throat> I think you may have experienced this. When you're playing sports mm -hmm. and you're, you're healthy and you, you've been working out, I think people notice, like, in They'll, hey, hey, you know, if you're in a grocery store or no matter where you are, they're like, hey, you, you play a sport, mm -hmm. you know, and I think they actually, they treat you a little different. They react to you a little different. You know, if you play that, you know, collegiate level, which is hard to, to make it to, and then mm -hmm. even more so if you make it to the NFL, mm -hmm. you know, obviously they have to, to go in and work out and they've been disciplined. They take care of their bodies. They eat the right things. Mm -hmm. They they do what it takes to be healthy and I think uh, a lot of people look up to you in that way and people ask me for advice on hey man I'm trying to lose this gut like what do you suggest I right. do and I'm like well I'm not really a trainer you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean but but I can help out and uh, and give some some thoughts and ideas whenever you know whenever somebody asks but right. I think uh, little kids and their reaction too is like, wow, it's a, a big guy, a big person, and they look up to you, they, they follow you and mimic you, they want to be like you. Right. I think that's big. This is Shop with a Jock 2011. Got my little buddy. One more behind. They don't really want much, you know, and then the things that they do get, they really appreciate it. I mean, it's just small things, and that's just really, you know, big for me that they're able to get what they want. It's just great for us to be able to give back. Our fans bless us with so much, and a lot of our fans are kids, and they look up to us, and I think that this is something that they'll remember for many years down the line. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. Now, um, on to the fun part. Uh, I want to ask you this. The American Ninja Warrior. Mm -hmm. I've loved, I mean, I'm, I've been to China. Uh, I've been a Kung Fu Ninja fan since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. um, 
how did that get set up? How was it? Did you train for it? Uh, well, I did a little bit of training for the American Ninja Warrior here at Impact, mm -hmm. and I got a call from my publicist, and she told me that they were doing the show down in Miami, and she asked if I would be interested in doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's a show that I've watched on TV many times, yeah. and I always criticize people, you know, <laughs> and I think it's easy to criticize people when you're just sitting at home watching TV. So right. whether it be like American Idol, Dancing with the Stars, yep. American Ninja Warrior, whatever, you know, any type of show where there's competition, I feel like I'm the uh, Simon Cow, you know, yeah, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, that's easy for people to do. Um, I wanted to go and actually experience it myself. And when I did, it was a phenomenal experience. I got to meet a lot of people and you'll be surprised, like a lot of people are NFL fans mm -hmm. in, in every avenue of life, you know? So there were a lot of people on there. I met a Harlem Globetrotter. Mm -hmm. uh, I met the guy who I guess was the, the previous champion on the show. Oh, and cool. I, you know, I actually, kind of got some pointers and some tips from him before I went through the course and mm -hmm. you, you establish some good friendships. There are people that I met there who, you know, I still communicate with today. They're, mm -hmm. they're good friends. So I really enjoyed that experience, but I trained for it here. My publicist set it up and I guess the next thing I would be interested in would be like the amazing race or something like that. Yeah. And how many, I know you got past the first round. How many rounds did you do or was on that one? Well, they do two rounds um, in one night. Uh, they do it by region. So the first time you do it, you only do half of the course and probably about half of the contestants get knocked off right. on that first part. And then you do the full course and that's pretty much if you finish to the end, you're pretty much in there. And yeah. I was I was bumped off because it's a timed event. So uh, you had guys who were smaller. I mean, they get through that thing like a squirrel, you yeah. know? And you know, for a heavy guy, it's, it's a lot of work to carry that yeah. that mass over a distance yeah. at a certain speed. But, yeah, a lot but easier if you're a gymnast and you're like you know 140, 50 pounds. Probably. Yeah, it, it's built for those. So I tell all of our DBs and wide receivers like they would do great at it. My dad played for the Raiders, and mm -hmm. I always thought that was the coolest uniform in sports. Like I just loved and always like I just think it's so cool the silver and black and. It was my, my first my first NFL game was at Oakland playing mm -hmm. against the Raiders, so that was cool for me. Um, talk about a little bit, I wanted to ask you what it's like to play uh, for Raider Nation, mm -hmm. the black hole behind you and the uniform, just everything about it. I enjoyed my experience in Oakland. They have some phenomenal fans and obviously when you watch them on TV, you'll see fans dressed up in you know crazy gear. Yeah. And I know other teams, you know, like you mentioned the uniform earlier, other, you know, people from other teams like, oh man, that's the best uniform, yeah. that's silver and black. And I think you just feel, you know, a certain way when you go right. out there. You have a certain know, swag it. about it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I mean, the people in Oakland, I love them. They're, they're crazy. Uh, I run into people everywhere. Like I went to a bank and mm -hmm the bank manager pulls out a card with a guy with like spiked shoulder pads and he's wearing makeup and he was like, hey, this is me. You know, I go to all the games, you know? And I'm like, man, this is a, a you know, high level guy in a bank, you right. know? But when he's outside and he gets to go to the Raiders games, that's where he, you know, cuts it loose. So I, yeah. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed uh, playing out there in Oakland. Great people, great city. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, the Florida State too. Growing up, I always thought that was a sweet uniform too. Mm -hmm. The, 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 uh, the gold and the, the maroon. To a quick testimonial for me, we trained together in Cleveland for an entire off season. Um, you saw some of the work I put in. Uh, I know we pushed each other. Well, I'd probably say your demeanor was, you know, quiet. You know, but as far as when it came to work, I mean, you know total beast just always doing extra and I'm like man you know I gotta step my game up a little bit or uh, you know I want to hang around this guy see if some of that energy rubs off on me and um, you know anytime you can make it to the NFL and play uh, I think it's a blessing and I think you have something special you know so I enjoyed our time together and being around you and I, you know I learned from you during our conversations and 
you know, I always try to take something, you know, back from people or try to take something that I can apply in my life. And I just think you were an ultimate professional. You know, you handled your business. You, you know, kept your, you know, yourself out of trouble. You never got into any trouble. Uh, I mean, you did what you were supposed to do. And I think it's guys like you who are great examples to, you know, kids who look up to NFL players. And you may not necessarily get you know, all the hype and the attention. There's a lot of guys, you know, offensive guys, superstars catching touchdowns and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I would say the NFL is comprised of a lot of guys like yourself that, you know, they just come in, they work hard. Uh, you know, they don't try to draw attention to themselves or anything like that. They just do what they're supposed to do. And they're great teammates and great people, great individuals. Yeah, and I could say the same thing about Cameron. I mean, he's one of my favorite workout partners. We did a lot together, not just working out. I mean, we'd hang out and uh, you know go out to eat in Cleveland. There's not much to do there, so we had tons of time to hang out. But um, you know, the conversations we had just between two men and two competitors and two people that are just on a certain level when it comes to getting work done, being a gladiator, doing what you're supposed to do. Um, you know, Cameron's a great person, uh, someone I still keep in touch with. Just one of the few guys. Where can people find more of you? if they want more of uh, I know you opened a restaurant, I know you got some other mm -hmm. entrepreneurial things going on, so just tell them uh, where they could find more Cameron, because he's, he's, uh, he's one of the guys you want to model and follow. Yeah, I'd probably say, as far as my Twitter, you can find me at Mr. Underscore Wembley 95. I don't tweet a whole lot, because I'm usually busy, you know, doing this, doing football, working out, stuff mm -hmm. like that, uh, but I'll probably post more this season on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Um, like Dave said, we did open a restaurant. It's called Wings and Things. It's, it's in my hometown in Wichita, Kansas, and I, I feel pretty good about that. We're putting out some some good food, and uh, people there have responded well. They support us, mm -hmm. and uh, so that also has a website, WingsandThings.com. Uh, but outside of that, just follow the Titans, and and hopefully I'll be out there giving you guys a lot of wins and making it to that next level, trying to win a championship, so. Alrighty, good. Cam, okay. appreciate it. It's always good catching up. Yeah. Um, did a good interview. Check him out. Peace. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Cameron. Here are my big takeaways. First, he said when he was younger that he had a vision and was dedicated really early on at a really young age. He wanted to go to FSU and that's exactly where he ended up and he was a star there. See, here's a guy that was blessed with tons of talent all the way through, didn't struggle, and made it all the way to the top, first round pick and all that, but he still had the work ethic, and that's what's maintained him. You see, when I first got to Cleveland, I am very strategic on who I pick to work out with because that's the time when we get better. And when I first got there, he leaped off the page. He worked harder than all the other linebackers there, so that was my choice. Next, I noticed he was very health conscious, which we didn't get into the interview, but he's only like 8% body fat. I mean, the guy's a true freak. He really cares about what he fuels himself with, which is very important. The last thing is he is just an ultimate professional. I mean, the guy was just featured in a magazine down here where he was shown to be a great husband and a great father to his two little girls. And just all around, just he loves to give back. Great guy, someone you really want to model. Ultimate professional is what I like to call him also. And lastly, he said that he wanted to match up with me to see if my energy kind of moved over to him. So that shows me he was doing the same thing that I was. He was looking for somebody that could bring his game up and keep his intensity level at a high. And that is a sign of a student of the game and somebody who wants to get better and is looking for any little edge and any little next level thing he can find. And finally what I want to say is keep sharpening your vision. Keep dreaming. I believe in you and I believe in what you're trying to accomplish. You've got what it takes. I'm telling you that. So keep hunting your greatness. And what I'd like you to do right now is scroll down and hit the like button and leave a comment if you got some kind of value out of this because I want to hear from you personally. I'm going to be reading responding to as many as I can. Thank you very much. Happy hunting and I'll see you soon.